Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to continue our launches to Mars. We have four small ones, well relatively small ones, and one big one. The big one will be the grand finale because, well, it's taking too long to roll out, so we have no choice but to leave it to the end. Uh, so yes, we're going to go ahead with one of these uh, do no ones. Oh, we have four, sorry, four of the small ones and one big one. So let's get on with it. Uh, okay, we have to recondition. Uh, we probably need to rush things a little bit more, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's taking 10 days to recondition. So, um, we're in a bind as far as staff is concerned. They're just gonna have to rush. Uh, we'll have to hire some temporary staff. Let's see, how much does that cost? Right now, we're making money. Uh, rushing doesn't seem to do enough. Um... Okay, we might have to hire some more staff temporarily and then fire them. I think that's we, we just have to do that. Okay, that gets us close to breaking even there, and we're not rushing. We could... Uh, are we... No, we're not rushing pad ELA-6. We could do that, too. That gets it to July 29th, but that cuts a lot of money out. But then it's better than hiring more people. Hiring more people actually costs more than that. Uh, and I don't think it's worth that much. Maybe it is. Alright, fine. But we'll just rush everything. Uh, we've got extra staff temporarily. Let's do this. Okay, launching another Duna L1. These are not with the boil-off test tanks. The only one that has boil-off test tank right now is the Ike one. Well, we'll try it now. SAS on. Uh, my throttle's not working right now. All right. Throttle up. That's probably because I have Unity open. Anyway, uh, ignition. He lost one engine again. It's always one of the boosters. We just gotta replace those boosters. Accelerating pretty well here. Should be through max Q by now. So yeah, for now we've built these rockets, so we're gonna use these engines that keep failing on us. Uh, the RZ twos, I suppose. RZ two Mark threes. They should have this many failures on ignition. Anyway. Okay, boosters off. Fairings off. Upper stage. But, we do seem to have all these failures for some reason. I mean, consistently having one go out on launch every single time is a little bit of an aberration. Just got a bad batch of the engines, I suppose. Okay. And finally, our Hydrolox engines, the RC-20s. Uh, can't use the throttle right now. All right, we are in orbit and we have plenty for the transfer. Okay, 4,077. All righty then. Okay. Oh, I tried to use my throttle again. Okay, ignition. We might be a little bit earlier on this one. Okay, this time I stopped it short, but we start early. Let's see what we've got here. Well, we don't have an encounter, but close. Ah, uh, we did go too far anyway. Okay, we're a little bit further off than previous times, but the mid-course adjustment should still be mild. Let's get into daylight, get it oriented for the sunlight, and then plot the mid-course adjustment. Or correction. Alright, separation. We are arriving pretty quick with this one though. 150 days, it's gonna be tough to slow down. But we're letting the atmosphere deal with that. I guess there'll be a variation on things. The other ones were coming in much more slowly. And the correction is more than with the other ones. Okay, so this one's on its way. 
let's get the next one. We'll launch the boil off test Ike first. I think that's this one because it costs more, but we have to wait for the reconditioning. Okay, well, close enough. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. Oh, that's way too many. Okay, no, 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 we can't. We can't launch with three engines. What the heck is going on with this thing? Uh, we, we got three engines out on launch out of eight. What kind of, what kind of role was that? <laughs> I mean, uh, random number generator, please. I mean, uh, the chance of success. That was the role. The chance of successful ignition is 97%, let's say, on those and 96.5 on these. I'll leave you to work out the chances of three of them going out like that. But yeah, we obviously have to recover this. But that takes up our time. Good thing we decided to start rushing things. Okay, well, every every one of those says ignitions remaining one, so save it. It's... Okay, well, let's try launching the other Ike one. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition. Oh, all of them work this time. Well then. How wonderful. Will this be an actual nominal launch of the Denev rocket? Okay, booster set. Bearing set. Stage set. All right, and finally, the RZ-20s. So our Phobos and Deimos landers seem to burden this stage a lot more. So we'll be cutting it a little bit close. So even though we had all the engines work this time on the launcher, uh, we're gonna be ending up in orbit with less Delta V here. But then the lander itself could finish up the transfer if it needed to in this case. Okay, we are in orbit. So maybe the Ike mission was not the best one in order to attach the solar panels to. Uh, we probably can't gauge the boil off very well since the stage will have less left. Gosh darn it. <laughs> it's all futile. Okay, ignition. We've got two engines as we transfer to Mars. Okay, definitely went too far there. Okay, that looks fine. Separation and activation. Don't, don't stop it. Okay. And this one's gotta be a long trip. 379 days even. Okay. So, oh, we can't do it this way. We don't want a polar. This, these, we can't have polar. Mistake. We need these in line with Phobos and Deimos, of course. Oh, well, we'll have a 42 degree difference. That's no good, but um, we can figure that out. With um, We don't need to dip into the atmosphere either because this doesn't have a heat shield for that. Uh, we will manually capture. So we'll do three degrees, uh, sorry, three meters per second there. Capture. Very loosely to the inclination change up there. Okay, so then we have 1,300 there, 400 ish there, and just to see how much it takes to match orbits with Phobos, which would be the harder one to get to. That's pretty much matched, and that's just another 600. So we certainly have enough delta V for that. So we'll have that plotted, and we have our mid-course correction all set. So, uh, that is already added. Let's go and launch another one. Okay, this is the rocket that launched a uh, lost a bunch of engines last time. Let's see how it does this time. Ignition. Seems to have all eight this time. And launch. 
we'll be doing the big one next, and then we have one more after that. Gotta turn off Russia on the big pad. Too bad it was all nighttime launches, but there we are. Okay, booster set. And everything else set. <laughs> Alright. Okay, dawn on the horizon as the stage completes and probably toss it up a little bit high this time. Much time to wapo apsis there. Okay, we'll cut it there. We have a little bit more Delta V than last time actually. But it's probably not worth trying to have this stage hang out, but we'll have the stage hang out, I suppose. Takes a little bit less than before, 4,000 meters per second. Well, even less, but still, that's not leaving a lot left in the tank for us to examine as far as boil off is concerned. And ignition. Looking good. And shut down. And of course we will correct again. I'll jot down the numbers. Now the solar panels on the stage are actually tracking solar panels, so... But this is just not a good angle, though we seem to be getting charge. But I feel like we should still point at the sun and spin up. It's another long trip. Even longer than the last one. 386 days. It's worse and worse. Well, I mean, that means that we'll be arriving with very little speed, which is good as far as the manual capture we have to do with them. 54 degree inclination, but we saw with the last one that that's no problem as far as correcting it. As long as we get uh, nicely at periapsis would be good. Well, that's close enough for me. All right, so a minor correction there in 144 days. And we'll see about the boil off. We have the amounts in here. And we have 100 MLI layers. RF boil off says right now 163 milliwatts of heat penetration, but that's going up here. Technically, all this stuff should be in the way of the sun if that works at all. And we have 0 0.0013 kilograms per hour of boil off. But what that ends up being when we're further away from the sun and all that business, we'll see. All right, so I think it's time to launch the big one. Fortunately, we have a lot of data on the Vulcane engines and they've been reliable, right? But we do have to time warp a little bit to line up with the ejection longitude of ascending nodes, so let's wait. And it's sad to have the first launch of this at nighttime, but here we are. It's also sad how it looks, but that's a separate matter. Uh, yep, what can we do? We needed uh, something that would fit a uh, wide hydrogen stage after all, and... And we don't really have bigger engines right now. The Vulcan engine is the largest, most powerful engine that the European Space Agency uh, can offer at this point, so, yep. I think we want to, whoa, it hop, it's hopping for some reason, I don't understand. Uh, I just wanted to roll out that one. Oh, that, that, that pad still has to be reconditioned. That's all I wanted to do. Um, okay, uh, throttle up, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Oh gosh, oh no. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, let's get Smart ASS on this as quickly as possible. I don't know, something with the launch clamps, maybe the engines and the launch clamps, they seem to be okay right now. So, there's something weird about the launch clamps, I'm going to say. Everything's nominal. <laughs> well, you know, at least we didn't have any engine failures. Okay, booster set. No problems there. 
Uh, probably we want fairings before the next stage. So, well, I didn't think that we would have trouble with the test of this, considering we've used the engines before, but it seems like, uh, seems like we've had some trouble with this test, as far as launch clamps are concerned, which is interesting. Dancing launch clamps. Not what you want to see. Okay, fairing set. Ooh, also not what you want to see right there. We'll have to up the ejection force on that. I don't remember. Okay, come on, staging. I feel like I wanted the 4000 just for transfer, but we are finishing orbit with this stage. Oh, we gotta extend the antenna. That's S band though. Might as well start the RPWS here. At least it's just uh, tug slash depot. So no big problems having it do the completion of the Mars transfer. Well, lopsided orbit, but okay for now. 3,940. Seems to be getting better and better on the Delta V. Maybe the optimal place wasn't exactly where we had it. Okay, we have to go. Okay, we're on escape. And, well, let's cut that for now. Separation. Okay, onward. So our first use of the AJ-10 advanced short nozzle. I don't know why we're using short nozzle. It's the only one we've got. Um, uh, but it gets vacuum specific impulse, so that's fine. But AJ-10-138, and we're getting our first data units on it. We should probably ignite the other ones. This is too slow. Okay, let's see. Well, as usual, adjustments will need to be made, but I don't even see an encounter right now. Uh, probably retro. Let's, let's plot something. Uh, it needs to have a radial burn. I think we'll do, just do that. Mid course, let's see. That doesn't seem to have much benefit. Oh, that's a huge correction. I don't know where we went wrong exactly. Probably just too late on the burn, especially because this stage takes so long. Well, we'll do that now and then we'll have a mid course correction for the inclination. Okay, well, we'll try that and figure out the make cross correction afterwards. We're doing this in a day because we don't want to do a radial burn and it's mostly a radial burn too close to the Earth. So we're waiting until we get to a higher orbit. But we're not waiting till mid-course because that didn't seem to be particularly good. Okay, ignition. I wonder why it suddenly started rotating. Huh. Okay, well that's the part we wanted to do there. And then we'll just adjust the mid-course correction. Okay, well that'll do for now. So, mild mid-course correction after this huge correction we have to do here. This has tracking solar panels, and they're pointing in a good direction anyway. So we will leave it be and pick up with this once we get to that node. Well, we've got one more to do, and I intend to do it in this episode, so let's hop to it. Last one. Okay. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. All eight engines are running, and go. Okay, booster is set. 
bearings, everything else. And on we go. Alright, and then the RZ20s. Alright, both of them lit, and we're looking good. Okay, we are in orbit, and it's sort of a better orbit than previous attempts. Got a whole 5,177 meters per second. I don't think we need all of it, and of course we can't bring it with us, so... Wish I had put the solar panels and the better controller on this particular launch. Oops, wrong thing. But no, I had to put it on a launch to where we couldn't use it. ASAP. Alright. I mean, well, we still have some fuel left in that particular launch, so maybe it'll tell us something. Alrighty. Here we go. So next time, we're gonna look to sending crew to the station, even though we can't pick up the contract for it. We could break that crew duration record, at least, and fulfill the terms of the contract that we can't pick up, and then I'll try and get the viewer approval for me just completing that program without having picked up the contracts explicitly because I finished the terms of the contract. So it'll be a 60 day one and a 90 day one. And we should be able to do both maybe by the time the probes actually reach Mars. It depends though. We do have to construct the vehicles and everything. I also want to launch a test article for the hydrogen tank for the NTR. So we want to launch the NTR tank into orbit without the engine and just see how the boil off is. We could later dock the NTR thing to that tank and it'll have extra fuel if necessary. Oh shoot! Uh, 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 no no! Oh we lost comms! No! Oh, I didn't notice we had lost comms. I tried to shut the engine down and... Oh well, this this one's the goners. I guess, you know, what is it? We, we've got six out there, it looks like. So, six out of seven is not too bad. Okay, maybe we should do something about comms too. We've got comms now, uh, but yeah, it's way overshot. And I mean, maybe if we were, no, it's not anywhere near anything else. Probably, uh, we'll just leave it be. I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, we'll extend its antennae and start whatever science it has. But I don't think it's gonna get anything done because we've probably done these things out there. The the science that we loaded up was dependent on it landing on Mars. But you never know, it could still act like, a, uh, act like a relay or something. And we should dump the stage, just in case, so... Alright. We'll let it try to survive, but it's not headed where it's supposed to be headed. Alright, so the last one was a failure. Gosh darn it. And maybe we'll look into some more commsats, I guess. We now have discovered a patch that ended up being critical. I don't know where exactly that is in relation to everything else, but yeah, maybe we'll launch a set of commsats. But for now, we have done our Mars sorties, or sortie, and we will proceed to other things in the next video. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.